Hey folks, welcome to another What The Spec video. This week, we're gonna be looking at what you need to know before buying your very first gaming PC. Yeah, that's right, at the time of filming, Christmas is just around the corner. Perhaps you're a parent whose kids have said they want their first gaming PC. Maybe you're a console gamer that's thinking now is the time to move to PC. Regardless, this video is gonna cover the most commonly asked questions that I get about this topic. And by the end of it, you're gonna feel really confident in making the right decisions when investing in your very first gaming PC. Okay, so I'm Craig Hume, Chief at Utopia Computers, a computer manufacturer based in Scotland. On this channel, I share tips for all things tech, sharing the knowledge that I've built up over building computers for the last 20 years, as well as working beside some of the best team in the industry. If you've got any questions after watching this video, hit me up in the comments and I am gonna do my very best to answer them right here. But you can, of course, jump over to utopiacomputers.co.uk and my team will help there too. Now keep in mind that the content of this video is based on years of serving Utopia's customers and helping literally thousands choose their very first gaming PC. So everything mentioned in the next 10 minutes or so is based on those years of experience. Now, to keep things simple, I've split this video up into three sections. In the first section, I'm gonna explain what it, made, what it takes to make PC gaming so special. Yes, heads up, PC gaming is really, really special. In the second section, I'm gonna cover the most commonly asked questions. They are, should I build a gaming PC? Should I buy one off the shelf? or should I have one custom built? And then finally, I'm gonna look at the specifications that you should be looking at and give you a quick overview of the key components so you know what's what when choosing one configuration over another. It's pretty likely that I'm gonna follow this video up with a deep dive into all those individual components, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of the coming videos in the next few weeks. So first up, what makes PC gaming so special? Why not just stick to a console? Well, the thing is, PC gaming, well, it's, it's nothing short of awesome. Okay, I'm obviously seriously biased, but they are. They are the iron men of athletes. They can put their hand to anything and are great all-rounders. You see, with a console, you can kick back, play some games, talk to friends, you might even be able to stream Netflix, but consoles quickly run out of talent. PCs, on the other hand, they're full-blown entertainment systems with VPN tools allowing you to stream content from all over the world, you can curate customizable libraries of music and film, as well as easily being able to turn their hand to any kind of home office or blended learning for schools. So from PowerPoint to Adobe's Creative Suite, allowing you to get the very best out of home education, home videos, and your pictures and videos. Now once you've got all that sorted, you can then move on to all the free learning tools that are out there to help you learn how to code, maybe even design your own games if that takes your fancy. But even if games are all you're interested in, gaming PCs have, of course, got that seriously covered. These days, with many Xbox and PlayStation titles now available to own on PC, as well as having a back catalogue of literally thousands of titles to choose from, with gaming platforms like Steam allowing you to buy games for under a pound, with Epic giving away a quality gaming title for free every single month, once you've made your investment in your PC, finding new fun digital adventures would never been so easy or cheap. Online indie platforms like Itch.io offer plenty of choices. In fact, while researching this video, I downloaded a fun game called Everything is Garbage. It was free. I had a blast playing it with my son for about an hour or so. Donation to that particular game dev, incoming. Thank you for making it. It was great. Now, all the while, while on PC, you're also learning about technology. You're learning how to keep it running smoothly, how to resolve any issues you might have, and how things like hardware and software actually work. It just makes, makes learning fun. PCs are also as individual as the gamers themselves, with each system being configured to suit the needs of that gamer. From entry-level systems that can be found for under 500 pounds, to full-blown, custom-painted, custom-designed systems at over 5,000 pounds. There really is a PC out there for everyone, and that's why buying one can be a little bit confusing. That's why I made this video. So now that you know that PC gaming is great, and it's a great choice over a console, let's move on to the next section. 
So should I build my own gaming PC, buy one off the shelf, or should I have one custom built for me? Really common question, and the answer to this really comes down to you. To help you choose which one's best, I'm gonna try and explain what it means and cover the top three reasons why you would buy this type of computer. Okay, so hang in with me, we're gonna do this. First up, building a gaming PC for yourself. This means that you're gonna go out and buy the parts, normally online, some kind of online retailer, you're gonna get them delivered, you're gonna assemble them, you're gonna install Windows, then you're gonna configure the PC, and then you're gonna test it. The reasons to build a PC yourself are threefold. First up, you're gonna to want to learn more about the hardware itself. Exploring new hardware can make, well, it can be great fun, and you're gonna learn how it all goes together, and once it's all done, that can be a very rewarding experience. You're also gonna to want to do it as a fun bonding project. It's maybe something you're gonna do with your kids or a friend. I built PCs with both my kids and it takes Lego projects to the next level. And finally, you're gonna need a genuine interest in problem solving should something go wrong. It's not always all plain sailing, and, but for some that's really like a majorly fun, important part of the journey. Now, what would the reasons that you would want to avoid building yourself? Well, you wanna save lots of cash. Frankly, these days, you're not gonna save much money building yourself. And if you do, something could go wrong, and if you end up having to pay for a replacement part because you broke it, that can feel like a very expensive mistake. Next up, you wanna save time. If this is your first build, expect there to be complications and delays. If you receive a faulty part, by the time you return that part and get it exchanged, it can be frustrating. And finally, you want support should something go wrong down the line. E-tailers like Amazon often ask you to deal directly with the manufacturer should there be an issue. This can be a real pain if you've got li limited troubleshooting knowledge. In some cases, not knowing what part is causing the problem can be tricky. Next up, an off-the-shelf gaming PC from a high street retailer. Who should buy this type of PC? This means going to an independent PC store or a larger chain like PC World and choosing from a PC that's all boxed and ready to go. The reasons you would want to buy this type of system are pretty straightforward. One, they're easy to buy and take home. Often, getting to see the PC in person before buying and sometimes even getting to take the PC home that very same day. Two, a good in-store salesperson is gonna help guide you to the very best PC for your needs and they're also not gonna make you feel uncomfortable by not knowing too much about PCs. A simple warranty for three, is, is a good sales point. If something goes wrong, you have this shop just down the road to take your PC back to. So why wouldn't you buy an off-the-shelf pre-configured PC? Well, first up, the hardware is often, it can be well outdated before you buy it. Due to the fast-moving nature of PC hardware, PCs that were designed only a few months ago can already be overpriced due to have older versions of hardware installed. The warranty that I mentioned before is only as good as the store you buy from. Make sure that they are there to help for questions that fall outside of the PC, simply not responding or not turning on. And that salesperson I mentioned can be a double-edged sword. The good ones are great, but the bad ones can be difficult to deal with, in some cases making you feel awkward for not understanding the technology, and in extreme cases, not understanding your needs and selling you the wrong gaming PC. Now finally, the option of getting a custom-built PC. Why would you buy one of these? Well, of course I'm slightly biased here, but a good custom-built gaming PC is the pinnacle of PC gaming. A good PC builder is gonna spend time talking over your needs, explaining the options, and tailoring a PC to suit you. They will also be there for you with the very best after-sales care should anything go wrong, from your PC not turning on, to being able to help you install an update for your favorite game. <laughs> cough, cough. Shameless plug, but Utopia Computers won this year's best system builder in the UK. Just saying. So why build, well, why buy, sorry, a custom built gaming PC? Well, you're gonna be guided to help choose exactly what you need to fit your budget. You're gonna get the very latest hardware and software with the system and it's all gonna be optimized to reach its maximum potential. A well-built PC is far more than just the sum of its parts. And you're also gonna get the very best after sale support for both technical issues, and other general questions. And why wouldn't you buy a custom-built PC? Well, first up, you're often gonna to have to wait, sometimes up to two weeks for your PC to be delivered. You also, buying a PC off the shelf and building yourself is likely to be a little bit cheaper than buying custom. And there is a learning curve. A good system builder should help you with this, but buying and purchasing a system online when you've not done it before, 
say there can be a learning curve there. So now you know where you're gonna buy your custom built PC, what kind of spec should you buy? Okay, so you've decided on your PC, you're going for a gaming PC, now you need to get to grips with the specification of the PC. And with all those numbers, where do you even begin? Well, the spec you need comes down to three key areas. I think three is definitely the magic number for today's video. So number one, how much do you want to spend your budget? At the end of the day, you can only spend as much as you've got, and this is gonna be a key factor to the specs you go for. It's worth saying for many, many years, a thousand pound has long been the sweet spot for a good quality all round gaming PC. Number two, what games are you gonna play? Games like Fortnite will run on practically anything. However, games like Call of Duty or Cyberpunk 2077, sorry, will need a really powerful computer to get the very best of them. And then finally, what monitor or TV are you connecting to? If you're planning connecting to a, like an HD TV or a monitor, you're gonna need a lot less powerful PC than if you're planning connecting to a 4K screen running at 144 hertz. More on that in a little bit. Before we go any further, I think it's important to mention at this point, PC gaming is very different to console gaming. On a console, every gamer experiences the game in the exact same manner. The graphics, the sound, and even the controllers are all pretty much identical. Yeah, you can have a nicer TV, you can have a cool modded controller, but at its core, the game experience is the same as someone running on a five-year-old TV with the controller that came with the console out of the box. PC gaming is very different. Almost every game comes with a wealth of settings that allow you to customize the graphics and the sound to suit your setup and your style. For some gamers, it's all about pure speed in order to be as competitive as possible online, in which case they optimize the settings for speed. For other gamers, they want the most photorealistic settings, enjoying the visuals that can be had with a high-end gaming PC. With this in mind, two gamers can be playing the same game, but seeing and hearing a very different experience, depending on their system specification and their individual preferences. And then there are the accessories with gaming keyboards, gaming mice, headsets, and more, allowing you to further customize your setup to eke out every last bit of performance and game the way you want to. So what specs are you gonna have to think about? Well, there are four key aspects to your PC. Hey, we moved on to four instead of three. They are as follows. Your CPU, your RAM, your graphics card, and monitor on that second, and storage. CPU, RAM, graphics card, and storage. There are other components, but I'm not gonna talk about them in this video, I'm hold them off for a separate video, as I think they go outside the scope of this beginner's guide. So let's start with the CPU. This is the brain of your computer. In the past, it was the most important component, but for gaming these days, the graphics card is arguably the key part. Your CPU is measured in two key ways. Its speed is measured in gigahertz or frequency and the amount of cores the CPU has. Think of it as being these cores being individual CPUs all within the main CPU. In 2020, most good gaming PCs come with either a four, six core CPU and a frequency of around four gigahertz. Eight core processors running at almost five gigahertz are starting to become the norm in higher end gaming PCs. My top pick here would be something like AMD's 5600X CPU. Next up, RAM. RAM is where all the information is stored in your computer when it works on any task. From loading its way through a game or blasting through the next level, eight gigabytes of RAM has long been seen as the minimum for PC gaming, with 16 gigabytes now becoming the norm due to low memory prices. 32 gigabytes is seen in higher end gaming PCs and there are games like Flight Simulator 2020 that are able to take advantage of it. But truth be told, most games can't utilize 32 gigabytes of RAM effectively, meaning 16 gigabytes is still the sweet spot. Kingston Hyper X RAM has long been a Utopia favorite, which brings me the great pleasure to introduce the sponsor for today's video. Kingston with their Hyper X Fury DDR4 memory, which provides powerful performance boost for gaming, video editing, and rendering, which speeds up to 3,733 megahertz. They feature plug and play automatic overclocking at 2400 megahertz and 266 megahertz speeds, and are both Intel XMP ready and ready for AMD Ryzen. HyperX Fury DDR4 stays cool with its stylish low profile heat spreader and RGB options are of course available. 100% tested at speed and backed with a lifetime warranty, they are number one memory choice of any of our Intel or AMD based systems. We put HyperX through its paces on each and every build and we're still blown away with how reliable they are when it comes to gaming. 
that's the even bigger difference between a big win or an even bigger blue screen. Now, graphics card. The most important part in your gaming PC. This card puts a picture on the screen and is responsible for a huge amount of computational work when it comes to gaming. While there are lots of brands of cards, they all choose between either Nvidia or AMD chipsets. Nvidia is my go-to at the moment, with cards like Nvidia's RTX series being able to realistically mimic lifelike reflections in real time. This is called ray tracing, to produce real-time gaming graphics, the likes of which was thought impossible only a few years ago. 6GB of VRAM, this is your memory on your graphics card that it uses, is the sweet spot now, with cards like the 1660 Ti being a minimum all-round card at the time of recording, RTX 2060 Super being a mid-range king, and the RTX 3070 being the start of the high-end options. AMD's cards are also very exciting, but Nvidia is what I recommend because of their reliability, stability, I just love them to bits. I mentioned earlier that monitors are important. I've got a whole video planned on why you should choose a certain monitor over a TV when you're PC gaming. But in short, if you're choosing a high performance monitor with 120 hertz refresh rate or above, make sure your graphics card is capable of supporting the native resolution of your monitor and that refresh rate. Your system builder or retailer is gonna be able to keep you right here. And then finally, storage. This is where you're going to keep all your files and games, as well as Windows itself and any applications you might want to install, like Microsoft Office and Adobe. For everyday use, a single drive will do just fine. But if you want a pro-level setup, then it would be best to think about having a couple of drives. Your first drive will be for Windows and games. An SSD, an M.2 NVMe, if your budget allows, is what you want here. You're going to need to stay well clear of mechanical hard disk drives. Hard disks are super slow and will make even the best gaming PCs slow to load. One terabyte SSD is a sweet spot for most gamers. Again, Kingston is a super reliable brand here with performance to opt in this space. And to be honest, I'd be recommending them even if they hadn't sponsored today's video. Second, you want a working drive for your photos, videos, and perhaps games that you don't play all that often. You can add something like a two terabyte hard disk drive for this purpose. Your PC's performance won't suffer except when it's trying to play those games installed on that drive. One last thing to consider is the looks and feel of your PC. As mentioned at the start of this video, gaming PCs are as unique as the gamers who play on them, with LEDs, braided cables, water cooling, all adding to the custom look of your new PC. Of course, options like this will add to the final cost of the system, but are worth considering. So there you have it. We now know why gaming PCs are great. If we're gonna build them, if we're gonna buy one off the shelf, or if we're gonna have one custom made, and we've also got an idea of the key specs and what they mean. I hope this video has been helpful. Um, if you still have some questions, then be sure to drop them in the comments below, and I will do my very best to answer them. More than anything, try and enjoy the process. Learning about gaming PCs and the technology that's involved can be great fun. I hope you've liked this video and be sure to hit like if you have, if you found it interesting. And if you wanna see more of this type of content, then elbow tap, tap that sub button as we do in 2020 and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.